the eruption of Mount Tambora in April 1815 was the largest volcanic cataclysm in historical times. Its global and diverse consequences were only gradually recognized and are now very important for climate research. The supervolcano that caused the year without summer has acquired a late worldwide fame shortly before its 200th birthday. Standing on the caldera rim of Gunung Tambora, one looks into a 1,000 meters deep abyss. The magnitude of the catastrophe that occurred 200 years ago is evident in all its splendor. Indonesia, the country with the most volcanoes, is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. This fault line ranges from the Kamchatka Peninsula, Japan, the Philippines and Indonesia to New Zealand. The other half is formed by the Aleutians and the western coast of Central and South America. In the Indonesian archipelago, two oceanic and two continental plates collide. In the area of the Lesser Zunda Islands, the Indonesian plate slides under the Asian continental plate. Here, on the little known island of Sumbawa, stands Mount Tambora. Sumbawa is located between the well-known islands of Lombok and Flores. Lombok is the neighbor island of Bali, the tourist hub of Indonesia. Because many of the beaches in Bali are so crowded and so dirty, some tourists escape to Lombok. Lombok is dominated by the 3,602 meters high Gunung Rinjani. It is the second highest volcano in Indonesia. Before the year 1815, Gunung Tambora was approximately 500 meters higher than Rinjani. However, according to recent scientific research, Mount Rinjani already erupted with supervolcanic strength and in the year 1258 caused a year without summer in Europe. According to ancient chronicles, this eruption destroyed the capital of the Kingdom of Lombok. The significant acid signal it left in Arctic ice is similar to that of the Tambora Cataclysm. To climb Mount Tambora, I come by way of Flores. In Flores, I visit the crater lakes of Kilimutu and the Komodo dragons. Here, in the far west of Flores, the ferry to Sumbawa takes off. It crosses the Straits of Sape. Luckily, on this day the dreaded storms are not on the agenda. The sea is smooth as glass. From Sape, the port city of the far east of Sumbawa, I take the bus to Bima, the island's capital. Sumbawa is considered remote and backward and is rarely visited by foreign tourists. The few tourists that come make off to the surfer ghettos. During my one-week stay on Sumbawa, 
I encounter no other Western tourists. One reason is that Mount Tambora is located on the most remote part of Sumbawa, the Sangha Peninsula. It extends to the northwest of the main island and, like it, arose from volcanic activity. Sangha's western part is formed by the mountain range of Gunung Tambora. The bus ride from Bima to the western tip of Sangha Peninsula takes almost a whole day and terminates in the small town of Panchasila. It is the base for the Tambora tracks. The adventuresome and hardy small groups who go for the climb are predominantly students from Java or Lombok. They now account for about 90% of the trekkers up to Mount Tambora. In the first half of 2013, there were, according to the summit book, only about 15 foragers who set out for the summit. The climb has five legs. The last is located at 2000 meters altitude near the tree line. Our small group, the guide, the porter and me, would like to reach it before sunset. Airline distance is only about 15 kilometers. But this figure is deceptive, because the trek is by no means easy. The path leads through tropical mountain forest. And since few nutrients are found in the deeper soil layers, the roots do not develop vertically, but horizontally, and form a network of pitfalls and obstacles. The dense forest gives no signs that the oldest trees are barely 200 years old. And already in position 2, it is located at 1300 meters altitude. We are all pretty exhausted. However, the closed canopy of the forest has its advantages. The heat of the day penetrates only slowly and the temperature remains comfortable. Before the air has had the time to heat up, we have already arrived at over 1000 meters of altitude. Our night camp at leg 5 is at 2000 meters altitude. From here we want to climb up to the summit in the middle of the night, reaching it in time to see the sunrise. Because our guide is young and inexperienced, he sets out much too early. Consequently, we spend two hours shivering and miserable on the caldera rim, before the dawn lights up the crater walls. The sunlight shows the gigantic dimensions of the crater. The diameter is six kilometers, and it is about 1000 meters deep. A vividly testimony to the cataclysm which occurred 200 years ago. It had the explosive power of 170,000 Hiroshima bombs. Since the 90s, there is considerable volcanic activity at the caldera floor. It is partially shrouded in thick white clouds of gas. 
Very few research teams who dared the arduous descent have made measurements and mappings. A new large eruption is extremely unlikely, but outbreaks of lava and earthquakes can be expected at any time. The Tambora Cataclysm was most probably the biggest volcanic catastrophe in historical times. It reached the magnitude of 7 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index and it is the only historical recorded eruption of a supervolcano. The eruption of Tambora did not come totally unexpected. Earthquakes occurred in the three years before 1815 and in the beginning of April 1815 there was an eruption of lower magnitude. The actual cataclysm started in the evening of April 10th. Three columns of flame rose up over the mountain, united and triggered massive pyroclastic flows. These avalanches of molten rock Ash and Tephra shot down the mountain slopes. They destroyed everything that stood in their way and transformed Tambora and large parts of the Sangha Peninsula into a burning inferno. At the same time, a dense rain of ash and pumice set in. The sea was covered for miles with Tephra and the fall of Tephra was observed as far as 1,300 miles away. According to the English governor of Java, the blast of the explosion was so powerful that it could be perceived 2,600 kilometers away. The explosion, the ash rain and tsunamis, as well as the related crop failures, killed about 70,000 people.